Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kumar Shankaran, and welcome to this session that we are having with Ampere Computing. Um, I'm the Vice President of Software and Platforms at Ampere. So for people who don't know about Ampere, we'll introduce the company first. I have a short video. Hopefully, this video plays this time. We had some difficulty in the earlier session playing the video. Hopefully, this plays well. And then we'll go over to the rest of the presentation. So let's get right to it. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about is the Ampere Emac processor that is optimized for the cloud, and that's what we're launching here today at the show. So you saw the executive management team, so we are a newly formed company. It's a fabulous semiconductor company that's based in the Bay Area. So the processor that we're building is called Emac. So talking about the cloud market segment itself initially before we dive into the product uh, details. So the cloud market itself is, as you can see in the slide here, it's a $14.6 billion market from a TAM perspective for the microprocessors, and it's increasing to about $16 billion by 2021. So that shows a CAGR of about 2% going from 2016 to 2021. Now, as we move uh, to the cloud part of that market segment, which is these red bars you see at the bottom, so there the market is going from about $5.2 billion in 2016 to about uh, $8.7 billion in 2021. So if that is growing at a CAGR of about 11%. So net-net, the, the microprocessor market itself, TAM-wise, is growing at 2% CAGR, while the cloud portion of that is growing at 11% CAGR. And the overall uh, dollar perspective of the total server is about 8.7 billion of cloud market segment, which is over 50% of the total market. So that's the market segment that we'll be going after within the EMAG processor line. Um, going to more cloud performance metrics, so what are typically the performance metrics that are used today in the cloud? So some of the important aspects are performance per watt, uh, performance per dollar, density, which is the overall density within the rack, and this consequently leads us to what's called the TCO, or a total cost of ownership. So if you look at a traditional rack and then move towards more of an optimized rack or the new rack, so people are all looking for a higher performance per watt, a higher performance per dollar, higher density, which consequently leads to a lower TCO. So rack-level TCO savings is one of the primary factors in transitioning from, to an alternate architecture from what you have deployed today. So how does the Ampere product itself address that market? So primarily we are focusing on these three market segments that you see up on the screen. So web tier being one of them. The second one is big data, data analytics, data mining, and the last is IT applications and storage. Now within these verticals, some of the workloads are things like web servers, Nginx, like N Nginx, HAProxy, web proxies, and other web apps and hosting applications like Drupal, WordPress, Rails. Within the center market segment, which is big data, so there are things like Hadoop, MapReduce, all of us have heard about these, Elasticsearch, Apache Storm, Spark, and going to more databases, which could be either NoSQL databases or structured databases. Things like uh, Memcached, Redis, Cassandra, MongoDB, Postgres, and MySQL. Finally, moving to the application storage category or IT. 
There are warm storage and cold storage. These are applications like Ceph, Gluster File System, OpenStack Swift, Cinder, and also applications in enterprise storage, networking, and security. So going to more product side of the current EMAG, which is, which is what we're launching today, how does this product address these market segments? Or what are the requirements for these market segments that are being addressed by our product? The current product has 32 high performance cores. It's 64 bit native ARM architecture, up to 3.3 gigahertz with turbo. And we are an ARM architecture licensee, which means that all the cores that we build are homegrown. So the CPU, the caches, the interconnect, everything is built by Ampere. We have a very large memory capacity and bandwidth, eight memory channels up to uh, DDR4-2667, which gives you about a, one terabyte of storage or 16 DIMMs per socket. It's about 33% higher capacity and bandwidth compared to the competition today. Moving to connectivity and RAS, so we have a large number of high bandwidth uh, PCI Gen 3, which is 48 lanes of Gen 3, and also end-to-end -end server class RAS, which is reliability and serviceability. It's optimized for data centers, so offer over 40% higher performance per watt and over 90% higher performance per dollar versus competition. And also use a very mature fabrication technology. So we have partnered with TSMC, and uh, this particular product is built using the 16 FinFET Plus technology, which is based on TSMC. And lastly, we have uh, OEM partnerships with, uh, uh, with a lot of people across the geog all geographies in the world. So we are partnered with uh, Lenovo as our lead partner for all the the platforms we're building. We have a, a booth here. You can see the Lenovo systems in action. Um, moving to software. So what are we doing with software, right? So one of the complaints that people always have is, okay, we have seen the hardware story. What's going on with software? So moving from left to right here on the screen, just wanted to give you a high-level view of where software is at this point in time with respect to 64-bit ARM or ARM V8. So going with GCC, LLVM, we are up, work with upstream community. All the support for 64-bit ARM is there, either in 6.x GCC, 7.x GCC. On the BIOS and BMC, we are partnered with AMI. So we use the Aptio V BIOS and the Megarec BMC software from AMI. Going to the mid-tier, which is the OS. So work, as I mentioned, again, working heavily with open source upstream on the kernel.org perspective. So uh, lined up with 4.14 Linux kernel. And then with the distros like Red Hat, CentOS, Canonical, SUSE, and Oracle. So RELSA, it's at 7.37.4. Same story with CentOS with 7.37.4. Canonical Ubuntu 16.04 and greater. Uh, SUSE is less 15. And lastly, Oracle, Oracle Linux, which is what we are demoing in our booth, is uh, Oracle Linux 7.4. Virtualization Java, um, have uh, KVM working today, which is the de facto standard hypervisor used for all applications in the cloud or a hosted deployment. Citrix is also available and uh, Docker is out of the box available in most distros today. OpenGDK and Oracle JVM are the traditional or standard JVMs for 64-bit R. So all this is what, what's called infrastructure software, and uh, all this is available pretty much out of the box in all distros today. So moving to more higher level software, right, or middleware or application level. So I won't go over all of these, there is a whole lot of them, but I'll just stick to some of them, which are the important ones. So move, going in a clockwise manner here, starting from the top right, so web server-wise, Apache, Nginx, um, HA Proxy, Solar, available today. Uh, web caching, Red Dev, Redis, Memcached is available out of the box again. Cloud big data side, um, Hadoop, Kibana, Spark, um, OpenStack, Lucene for search is available today again. Storage-wise, Ceph is a very, uh, we support Ceph, we support enterprise Ceph as well. Cluster and Swift is also supported on the 64-bit ARM architecture. Moving further to databases, Cassandra, Couchbase, MySQL, MongoDB, Postgres, as we spoke about before, all of them are available. We are showing a demo today with MySQL and uh, several applications like WordPress and uh, Search running on top of MySQL and Oracle Linux. Languages-wise, Ruby, Erlang, C++, Go, work heavily with the upstream communities for these, uh, these aspects or various aspects of languages to get them optimized for our architecture. And lastly, web apps and hosting-wise, Drupal, MediaWiki, as I mentioned, WordPress, available out of the box. So majority of these applications that are run today in hyperscale data centers is available and optimized on EMAG. Uh, moving on, so this is a, the picture of the, the server itself. So this is a Lenovo branded server. As I mentioned, Lenovo is a lead partner for building platforms based on EMAG. So we are sampling this. Will be available in production towards the 
towards summer. So early summer, we should have these uh, directly orderable from, from Lenovo. And uh, this, this is there in our booth. You can come and take a look at it, get a hands-on feel. It's a 2U server. And uh, you can kind of see it's a dense server. It has 16 DIMMs and uh, supports up to one terabyte of memory. The front view and back view, uh, overall, it can either be used as a storage-based server or a compute server or even uh, an in-memory database or a database kind of server. Um, so also showing a web app software stack. So, so just to show you a little bit of more maturity, so we are showing this demo at the, uh, in our booth today. So what is running behind the screens or uh, behind the, the scene there is what we are showing in this software stack. So, so we have at the bottom is the Emacs server, the BIOS is the AppTOV BIOS, which I spoke about. Then Oracle Linux is the standard operating system we are using today. And then we're taking two forks. You can see two forks. MySQL database is used for running what's called Bugzilla. So Bugzilla is a bug tracker that I think all of us are familiar with. Many of us use it in production today for issue reporting, bug tracking, and reporting. So the bug Bugzilla database works over Nginx web server, which uses Perl to communicate with the backend which is running on MySQL. The middle tier WordPress, again, same story there. So WordPress runs on Nginx, Nginx runs on PHP. PHP runs on Memcached, which is caching the data, which runs on MySQL over Oracle. And then lastly, on the search side, Apache Solar is a search engine. So it built-in supports uh, search, and then works with a query cache, which is used for caching the data, then works with Memcached again for a web cache, running on top of Lucene, which is a search engine, JVM, which is Oracle J Java, and then running over the Oracle Linux. So I didn't mean to bore you with the slide, but just to show you when you see a demo, there's a lot that goes behind the screens or behind the scene when you, when you see a full software stack that is running the demo. Moving on, also showing Microsoft Windows. So this is probably the first time we are coming out with a Microsoft Windows demo. And uh, this is booting out of the box. So this is running native Windows Server on the Emag uh, platform. And just have some screens here. Uh, come over to the booth, you'll see, a, you can get a look and a hands-on look and feel for this particular demo. So I just have one screen up there which shows the, it's a, a Windows for 64-bit ARM demo. And uh, so Microsoft has a connect or collaborate program by which all ARM vendors download this and then bring it, bring it up on their respective hardware. Moving on, um, this is a, a value proposition that we bring to the table, it's called Cassandra. And Cassandra is an in-memory database, uh, which pretty much runs in memory. So the data that runs on disk is brought to memory and then pretty much executed from there. And uh, so here is where we have a, a very good value proposition with Emag as a product, where we compare our performance to the Intel Gold and the Intel Silver, which is based on the Skylake architecture from Intel. So in terms of the three vectors, again, performance per watt, performance per dollar, and performance per rack, so you can see the curves here, higher the better, basically. That's the idea. And uh, so the net-net, the summary is that when you run Cassandra, if you're having a live demo, come over, take a look. You can press the run button. You'll, you'll see this data running live. And uh, so the summary here is that we are about 15% higher in performance per watt versus the gold and 10% higher than a comparable silver part from Intel. The Emag is over 35% higher than gold and 20% higher than silver at the performance per dollar Again, this is all at a rack level and at a two-piece server level. So two-socket server or a two-piece server level. And lastly, performance per rack, it's about 20% higher than gold and 35% uh, higher than silver. So, so this is one of the applications. There are many more like this. So this is one in-memory database application we are showing where we bring a good value proposition and an overall reduction in TCO when, you, when a customer deploys it in their uh, existing data center. And lastly, so I just wanted to end by sh showing, uh, sharing this with you. So we have a booth here, as I mentioned several times, it's A32. Come over, we have all the, I'll be there. I can answer many more questions regarding the demos that you, the, you are seeing at the booth or any other questions you have regarding the product itself, the Emac processor. And uh, that's, uh, yeah, we can have additional discussions and further actions can be taken at that point in time. So it's A32, which is located right behind over there in the corner. And that's all. That's all I had from my side. Thank you.